I'll read you a story called The Badger and the Bear. On the edge of a forest there lived a large family of badgers. In the ground their dwelling was made. Its walls and roof were covered with rocks and straw. Old Father Badger was a great hunter. He knew well how to track the deer and the buffalo. Every day he came home carrying on his back some wild game. This kept Mother Badger very busy, and the baby badgers very chubby. While the well-fed children played about, digging little make-believe dwellings, their mother hung thin sliced meats upon the long willow racks. As fast as the meats were dried and seasoned by sun and wind, she packed them carefully away in a large thick bag. This bag was like a huge stiff envelope, but far more beautiful to see, for it was painted all over with many bright colors. These firmly tied bags of dried meat were laid upon the rocks in the walls of the dwelling. In this way, they were both useful and decorative. One day, Father Badger did not go off for a hunt. He stayed at home, making new arrows. His children sat about him on the ground floor. Their small black eyes danced with delight as they watched the gay colors painted upon the arrows. All of a sudden, there was heard a heavy footfall near the entranceway. The oval-shaped door frame was pushed aside. In stepped a large black foot with great big claws. The other clumsy foot came next. All the while, the baby badger stared hard at the unexpected comer. After the second foot, in peeped the head of a black bear. His black nose was dry and parched. Silently he entered the dwelling and sat down on the ground by the doorway. His black eyes never left the painted bags on the rocky walls. He guessed what was in them. He was a very hungry bear. Seeing the racks of red meat hanging in the yard, he had come to visit the badger family. Though he was a stranger, and his strong paws and jaws frightened the small badgers. The father said, How, how, friend? Your lips and nose look feverish and hungry. Will you eat with us? Yes, my friend, said the bear. I am starved. I saw your racks of red fresh meat, and knowing your heart is kind, I came hither. Give me meat to eat, my friend. Hereupon the mother badger took long strides across the room, and as she had to pass in front of the strange visitor, she said, Ah, Han, allow me to pass, which is an apology. How, how, replied the bear, drawing himself closer to the wall and crossing his shins together. Mother Badger chose the most tender red meat, and soon, over a bed of coals, she broiled the venison. That day the bear had all he could eat. At nightfall he rose, and smacking his lips together, that is the noisy way of saying the food was very good, he left the badger dwelling, the baby badgers, peeping through the door flap after the shaggy bear, saw him disappear into the woods nearby. Day after day the crackling of twigs in the forest told of heavy footsteps, out would come the same black bear. He never lifted the door flap, but thrusting it aside entered slowly in. Always in the same place, by the entranceway, he sat down with crossed shins. His daily visits were so regular that Mother Badger placed a fur rug in his place. She did not wish a guest in her dwelling to sit upon the hard bare ground. At last, one time, when the bear returned, his nose was bright and black, his coat was glossy, he had grown fat upon the badger's hospitality. As he entered the dwelling, a pair of wicked gleams shot out of his shaggy head. Surprised by the strange behavior of the guest who remained standing upon the rug, 
leaning his round back against the wall. Father Badger queried, How, my friend? What? The bear took one stride forward and shook his paw in the badger's face. He said, I am very strong, very strong. Yes, so you are, replied the badger. From the farther end of the room, Mother Badger muttered over her beadwork, Yes, you grew strong from our well-filled bowls. The bear smiled, showing a row of large, sharp teeth. I have no dwelling, I have no bags of dried meat, I have no arrows. All these I have found here, on this spot, said he, stamping his heavy foot. I want them. See, I am strong repeated he, lifting both his terrible paws. Quietly, the father badger spoke. I fed you. I called you friend. Though you came here a stranger and a beggar, for the sake of my little ones, leave us in peace. Mother badger, in her excited way, had pierced hard through the buckskin and stuck her fingers repeatedly with her sharp awl until she had laid aside her work. Now, while her husband was talking to the bear, she motioned with her hands to the children. On tiptoe, they hastened to her side. For reply came a low growl. It grew louder and more fierce. Whoa! he roared, and by force hurled the badgers out, first the father badger, then the mother, the little badgers he tossed by pairs. He threw them hard upon the ground. Standing in the entranceway and showing his ugly teeth, he snarled, Be gone! The father and mother badger, having gained their feet, picked up their kicking little babies and, wailing aloud, drew the air into their flattened lungs till they could stand alone upon their feet. No sooner had the baby badgers caught their breath then they howled and shrieked with pain and fright. Ah, what a dismal cry was theirs, as the whole badger family went forth wailing from out their own dwelling. A little distance away from their stolen house, the father badger built a small round hut. He made it of bent willows and covered it with dry grass and twigs. This was shelter for the night, but alas, it was empty of food and arrows. All day Father Badger prowled through the forest, but without his arrows he could not get food for his children. Upon his return, the cry of the little ones for meat, the sad quiet of the mother with bowed head, hurt him like a poisoned arrow wound. I'll beg for you, said he in an unsteady voice. Covering his head and entire body in a long loose robe, he halted beside the big black bear. The bear was slicing red meat to hang upon the rack. He did not pause for a look at the comer. As the badger stood there, unrecognized, he saw that the bear had brought with him his whole family. Little cubs played under the high-hanging new meats. They laughed and pointed with their wee noses upward at the thin sliced meats upon the poles. Have you no heart, Black Bear? My children are starving. Give me a small piece of meat for them, begged the badger. Whoa, growled the angry bear, and pounced upon the badger. Be gone, said he, and with his big hind foot he sent Father Badger sprawling on the ground. All the little ruffian bears hooted and shouted, Ha ha, to see the badger fall upon his face. There was one, however, who did not even smile. He was the youngest cub. His fur coat was not as black and glossy as those his elders wore. The hair was dry and dingy. It looked more like kinky wool. He was the ugly cub. Poor little baby bear. He had always been laughed at by his older brothers. He could not help being himself. He could not change the differences between himself and his brothers. Thus again, though the rest laughed aloud at the badger's fall, he did not see the joke. His face was long and earnest. In his heart he was sad to see the badgers crying and starving. 
in his breast spread a burning desire to share his food with them. I shall not ask my father for meat to give away. He would say no. Then my brothers would laugh at me, said the ugly baby bear to himself. In an instant, as if good intention had passed from him, he was singing happily and skipping around his father at work, singing in his small high voice and dragging his feet in long strides after him, as if a prankish spirit oozed out from his heels. He strayed off through the tall grass. He was ambling toward the small round hut, when directly in front of the entranceway, he made a quick side-kick with his left hind leg. Lo! There fell into the badger's hut a piece of fresh meat. It was tough meat, full of sinews, yet it was the only piece he could take without his father's notice. Thus, having given meat to the hungry badgers, the ugly baby bear ran quickly away to his father again. On the following day, the father badger came back once more. He stood watching the big bear cutting thin slices of meat. Give, he began, when the bear, turning upon him with a growl, thrust him cruelly aside. The badger fell on his hands. He fell where the grass was wet with the blood of the newly carved buffalo. His keen, starving eyes caught sight of a little red clot lying bright upon the green. Looking fearfully toward the bear, and seeing his head was turned away, he snatched up the small thick blood. Underneath his girdle blanket, he hid it in his hand. On his return to his family, he said within himself, I'll pray the great spirit to bless it. Thus he began a small round lodge, sprinkling water upon the heated heap of sacred stones within he made ready to purge his body. The buffalo blood, too, must be purified before I ask a blessing upon it, thought the badger. He carried it into the sacred vapor lodge. After placing it near the sacred stones, he sat down beside it. After a long silence, he muttered, Great Spirit, bless this little buffalo blood. Then he arose, and with a quiet dignity, stepped out of the lodge. Close behind him, someone followed. The badger turned to look over his shoulder, and to his great joy he beheld a Dakota brave, in handsome buckskins. In his hand he carried a magic arrow. Across his back dangled a long fringed quiver. In answer to the badger's prayer, the avenger had sprung from out of the red globules. My son, exclaimed the badger, with extended right hand. How, father, replied the brave, I am your avenger. Immediately the badger told the sad story of his hungry little ones and the stingy bear. Listening closely, the young man stood looking steadily upon the ground. At length the father badger moved away. Where, queried the avenger, my son, we have no food. I am going again to beg for meat, answered the badger. Then I will go with you, replied the young brave. This made the old badger happy. He was proud of his son. He was delighted to be called father by the first human creature. The bear saw the badger coming in the distance. He narrowed his eyes at the tall stranger walking beside him. He spied the arrow. At once he guessed it was the avenger of whom he had heard long, long ago. As they approached, the bear stood erect with hand on his thigh. He smiled upon them. How, badger, my friend? Here's my knife. Cut your favorite piece of deer, holding out the long, thin blade. How, said the badger eagerly. He wondered what had inspired the big bear to such a generous deed. The young avenger waited till the badger took his long knife in his hand. Gazing full into the black bear's face, he said, I come to do justice. You have returned only a knife to my poor father. Now return to him his dwelling. His voice was deep and powerful. In his black eyes burned a steady fire. 
The long, strong teeth of the bear rattled against each other, and his shaggy body shook with fear. A howl, cried he, as if he had been shot. Running into the dwelling, he gasped, breathless and trembling. Come out, all of you. This is the badger's dwelling. We must flee to the forest for fear of the avenger who carries the magic arrow. Out they hurried, all the bears, and disappeared into the woods. Singing and laughing, the badgers returned to their own dwelling. Then the avenger left them. I go, said he, in parting, over the earth. Thank you.